Hello everyone, my name is Ernie Martin, Founder and Managing Director of Receivable Savvy, and I'm here with Susie West of Shared Services Link, and we're at the Shared Services Leadership Summit in Atlanta, Georgia. So Susie, thank you for joining us and uh, being part of the Savvy Report. Pleasure. So uh, tell us a little bit about Shared Services Link and the Shared Services Leadership Summit. Sure. Um, so Shared Services Link is a business community um, of tens of thousands of leaders in shared services. Um, our aim is to help our, our members um, excel within their shared services organization. Um, our kind of our thinking around all of this is if, if we can help shared services uh, organizations perform better, improve right. their processes, automate as much as they can, offer a great service to their internal customers, it will allow the front office, their respective front office, uh, to, to focus much more on uh, growing their companies and uh, growing revenue, etc. So kind of from a, a wider perspective, we mm -hmm. think we kind of will have a knock-on effect on the global economy as well, but we start very much with shared services organizations and helping empower them to, to, to do better. Mm -hmm. um, the leaders event is um, our annual event for leaders in shared services within the North American market. Mm -hmm. um, this event in particular, we've been doing it every year, probably for about the last seven or eight years. And uh, this year in particular, we've focused a lot on RPA. Mm -hmm. um, so we've probably had about seven or so case studies uh, where the organizations have been focusing a lot on RPA. Right. And obviously as a tool, it's been fascinating and finding out what they're doing at a kind of detailed level. But the really exciting thing is what it is empowering and enabling shared services organizations to do. Right. And, and that is a very exciting conversation. Yes, RPA is, is very hot right now. It you're, is, you're, yeah. you're absolutely right. Yeah. And so um, from, a, from an accounts receivable order to cash mm. perspective, how does a AR order to cash process roll into a larger shared services organization? Sure. So um, when shared services came into being probably but now about 20 to 25 years ago, uh, AP, purchase to pay, was really the, the primary focus. Right. And, um, and then shared services organizations would look at other transactional processes within finance and start bringing them into scope. Um, order to cash, AR, was, was one that came in sh relatively shortly after mm. AP. Um, however, uh, because of how it is handled organization to organization, um, and also industry to industry, the pace at which it's actually folded into shared services has been a little slower than mm -hmm. purchase to pay, which is a little bit more standardized industry to industry. Right. So it's not necessarily as mature. So what we're kind of finding is that um, with say purchase to pay or even record to report, you can kind of look at the beginning and end of that and actually most of that, if not all of it, can be slotted ni neatly into shared services right. and shared services can own all of it end to end. With order to cash, it's a bit different. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're finding is that a lot of organizations break order to cash into two, two main parts. Okay. Um, so you've got your order to bill and then bill to cash. Mm -hmm. And the bill to cash part has kind of uniformly sat in shared services for a, a good period of time, for, for years, I mean, for decades for some, for some organizations. Mm -hmm. But it's that first bit, the order to bill, which can slot in nicely, but because it's got such a kind of a commercial touch point, mm -hmm. um, it, the, the commercial part of the business um, has been a, a little bit um, more nervous about re kind of releasing it right. into shared services. It can drop in, uh, but it doesn't always drop in uh, for, for, for organizations because of that change management issue. Mm -hmm. So what we're generally finding is that probably about 60% of shared services that have AR um, or order to cash within shared services, mm -hmm. um, it's for the bill to cash piece and not right. the order to bill piece. Right. Now, is it um, is it good for uh, the order to order to bill component to be part of a, sh a larger shared services organization? Absolutely. Um, if you can do it, then mm -hmm. it's absolutely worth doing. Um, the, 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 the one of the main arguments for it is obviously there's going to be cost reduction mm -hmm. around bringing the order to bill part in, right. um, but um, uh, concerning things like uh, your quality of data, um, because the shared services organisation is going to be owning data at source because they are inputting the data, right. uh, they will know that um, 
uh, fraud, fraudulent activity will drop right. and that the quality of data is a lot more reliable. So it really does make sense to bring the, the, uh, the auditor to, to build part into your uh, shared services organization. Right. So as we know, everyone loves change, right? No, no one's <laughs> resistant to change. So, so when that transition begins and, and when it occurs, um, wh what does that ideal transition look mm. like in, in shared services? So um, if you're going to move order to cash into shared services, um, so start off by, by being really clear about why you're doing it right. and uh, what success looks like. And once you've got a clear idea and all of that, then go sell it to your, your senior leadership team yeah. um, and get them excited about it, get them excited about your vision. So once you've got the buy-in from then, from then make sure it, um, that buy-in cascades down mm -hmm. so that at, at every level possible, you're not going to meet that resistance. So that's a key success factor. Right. Um, also educate people in the organization that there will be a dip in service. Mm -hmm. So just be realistic about what's achievable. Of course, there's going to be a dip in service. It's natural. Right. Um, so educate all your stakeholders on that so that they can uh, basically be sensitive to, to, to that and be patient mm -hmm. as much as possible. Right. Um, avoid a lift and shift mm -hmm. as, as much as you can. If you're just doing this for cost, then uh, you might be kind of causing yourself a bit of a headache mm -hmm. further on down the line. Um, if you if it is decentralised right now, and you're looking to, it's going to be fragmented. It's going to be destandardised. They're going to be your entities are going to be doing this in multiple different ways. Right. Right. So um, you don't want to just lift. Um, what's in the entities and just drop it into a shared services without doing process re-engineering. Mm -hmm. You've got to have process re-engineering be a key part of this. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that those really are some of the key key factors in, in all of your transition to, to make sure that you're on a steady, strong path to as a successful implementation as possible. Right, right. And so you've been in this space for a while. Um, shared Services Link has been really at the forefront uh, in, in this endeavor. And um, what, what do you see just in, in your travels and your experience? What are some of the lessons learned for organizations that want to move in this direction and are contemplating uh, putting together and integrating a shared services uh, mm -hmm. organization? So um, it's not, although it's within finance, it's not pur purchase to pay and it's not record to report. So mm -hmm. when you're having conversations with the shed, so with the, the business, right. uh, don't bundle it up as, as part of those conversations. Don't bundle it up with P2P and um, R to R. It is separate. Mm -hmm. It's got very much a commercial part um, component within it. So you kind of want to have a separate conversation about order to cash. If you're wanting to bring in end to end uh, order to cash, then get close to commercial. Mm -hmm. Commercial chances are will want to hold on to that for that first part, the order to bill. Um, if you can, just persuade them that you can do a better job and it makes more business sense to have the whole end to end within shared services. And you don't want just want that, that finance part right. of, of order to cash. Mm -hmm. And that does mean that you will need to get close to them, speak their language, and have um, a very sophisticated approach with commercial in order to, to kind of get their, their buy-in. Mm -hmm. um, also try and do this in small steps. Don't tr try and kind of right. boil the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, this is big and it's risky. You want to get it right. Um, you know, you don't want to rush at it and then get ca cash allocations done incorrectly. This, there are risks around doing this and you, so you want to make sure you do it properly. So a small steps um, with a kind of a long-term plan where you make sure that you're always kind of continuously communicating with the right stakeholders and, right. and, and, and th so there are no surprises along the way. Right. It sounds like over-communicating is better. Is, is that correct? Yes. I mean, I, I suppose so. if you want to kind of put it like that, I think yeah. it's just making sure that um, all your key, you know who your key stakeholders are, you mm -hmm. know why they're a stakeholder, you know what's important to them, and you're sharing them on a, on a, a, on a kind of a healthy frequency um, what they need to know so that they don't start getting nervous right. and they don't start kind of coming up with their own theories in their own mind as to right. what you are doing or what you're not doing. Right. So you want to make sure that you've got um, your story straight with them, your plan straight with them, and as much as possible you've got the data there mm -hmm. ready to show them so you've got some evidence as well. Is a shared services organization ideally suited for only large organizations or can mid-sized companies and small businesses benefit from it as well? So um, as, as you, you know, Ernie, I mean, shared services has been very popular 
in the enterprise market. Right. So you look at the 10,000 biggest companies in the world, 70-80% um, of those 10,000 companies have already deployed shared services. Mm -hmm. And that's in purchase to pay, record to report, order to cash. So finance, the classic processes, pretty much sorted and done. And now they're looking at um, aggressively pushing it out within HR, procurement, etc. Mm. So then we start moving down to uh, the kind of the mid market, so c roughly a quarter of a billion up to a billion shared services, um, including order to cash, absolutely makes sense there. Mm -hmm. the, the kind of the litmus test really is um, not so much actually about revenue, it's much more around how many FTEs you've got in the organization right. and how many mm -hmm. transactions you're dealing with. So um, these are the kind of the critical factors, the critical KPIs to look at mm -hmm. to start building a case on shared services. If you look at smaller organizations, say for example with a hundred million hundred million dollar turnover, does it make sense for them to bring um, order to cash into shared services or even set up shared services themselves? Mm -hmm. And the answer is uh, probably yes, um, but their the cost case might be a bit tighter. Right. So their drivers probably should just be more around uh, visi improving visibility, mm -hmm. um, improving the service that they're offering to the business and um, improving processes. They also might want to potentially look at, uh, rather than putting their shared services in a low cost location or offshoring it, they might want to keep it closer to their head office. Right. Um, and they might not be so tempted to, to look at outsourcing potentially. Right. So they might be just slightly different rules around doing shared services if you're, say, a, a smaller organization turning over, say, $100 million. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. Well, Susie, thank you for joining us, and uh, we appreciate you being part of the Savvy Report, and um, hopefully we can talk to you again. It's my pleasure. Thank uh, you, Annie. Thank you.